Mikey's 12. He is this thoughtful, analytical kid. He's such an inspiration in terms of what he can do with soccer, and he's done two triathlons. I think I've been playing soccer for eight years. My dad used to play a lot when I was little. I had a ball, and I think I kicked it around, and I started to like it a lot. Ready? Yep. Five, four, three, two, one. I had my infusion today. Every other week, they gave me three shots, and I've been doing it for so long, and I think it's really helped. I have cystic fibrosis. Mary would always do first day of school, like hold up the sign of what do you want to be when you grow up. And Michael's was always, I want to be a pro soccer player. And he's really good at soccer. And so like the thing that excites me is the potential of actually like realizing that. Dylan is just this free spirit, energetic wrecking ball. He walks in a room and he just is hysterical and full of life. My mom told me we need to get me into a sport and so for some random reason she chose gymnastics. He's in the gym between 12 and 15 hours every week. So with Michael, it was interesting. When Mary was pregnant, the hospital did a blood test and they said, hey, you carry this gene, this mutated gene for cystic fibrosis. Words I will never forget, probably nothing, but we should have your husband tested. So I went in and had a blood test. And so we knew while she was still pregnant with Michael that we were both carriers of this gene. And there's actually a 75% chance that we would not both pass on that mutated gene. But now we had two kids and they both have cystic fibrosis. It makes me feel better knowing I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Knowing that I'm not the only person that has it and has to deal with it. There's a lot of rules about people with CF being a certain distance apart. With kids, you know, our doctors told us, and it was good advice, they're brothers, like you're gonna have to let them be brothers. We try to be careful about a lot of things. They never drink out of the same cup, but they're brothers and they wrestle and fight and mess around. They'll go in and blow their pulmonary function tests and one will blow and then the other will be like, well, I'm gonna beat you. I think he beat me last time by like one. No. Or two. These last couple times I have not been doing good, remember? He's doing fine. It's He's supposed to be around better. like 110. It's also because I'm older. These two kids are gonna have each other and all of it and they're gonna understand each other in a way that no one else in this world will. Our boys are in the last 10%, and so we are in this fight, we are in this ring until the very last patient has a cure. I always say that the thing I love about the boys is they both have um, big dreams. And I try to support that idea of like have the big dreams, boys, because I don't want them to feel like this disease can somehow hold them back from that. We've always told our kids, you write your story. You don't let anyone else define you, and CF will not define you. I'm so proud of you, honey. I love you so much. I'll be back. Do you need anything, sweetie? No, I'm fine. Thank you. It's a very labor-intensive disease to manage. Mary and I will often say it's kind of a grind. It's, you know, an hour in the morning, typically, an hour in the evening. They're really good boys, and they definitely follow the regimen, but it's a lot. That's the scary part, I think, when I think about the future. As they get older, as they get into college, they're going to be on their own, and it's going to be their responsibility to do their treatments. And so adherence with that treatment regimen is a real challenge that everybody in the cystic fibrosis community faces when their kids get to a certain age. There are certainly a lot of those days where you know one of them is facing an infection or all of a sudden their lung function just dropped and you're trying to figure out what's going on here and are we gonna have to admit him? Michael has been in patient six times for CF exacerbations. 
Dylan's been admitted one time. He spent his first day of first grade in the hospital. And the reality of what the disease is kind of sets in in that moment. I don't, I don't let it in very often. It's a bit frustrating at times to say, hey, we've put in all this work, we've seen amazing progress, but there's nothing yet, you know, for my boys. The foundation feels like family who's in this fight with us. It's not like me to just have blind optimism towards something. I'm very skeptical, but I absolutely believe that we're doing the right things to find a cure. And I really, in my heart of hearts, believe we are gonna find something for that entire last 10%, and we're not gonna stop working until we do it. Thank you for everything that you've already done for us and finding me cute. Same.